Okay. Can I put my umbrella back here? Is that, is that allowed? Yep. I need probably need a booster seat. I knew it doesn't quite fit in. I know, I, I'll, I'll probably need a booster seat. But, oh. Hey, what are you doing? What are you doing, buddy? Here we are, look at that. Yeah. I just episode noticed. five. Episode is it episode five? Episode on the five fifth already. One? Dang. Pastor Many, we are honored to have you on board. Why is there a deer have you ever seen a deer crossing? On that deer crossing? Was there a sign? Oh my gosh. Yeah. yeah. No, I've never seen a deer. Did you ever hear that one where that uh, there's an actual call to a radio station that the lady says Someone didn't close their door properly. Uh oh. Did me? Probably me. That was new. Oh, that was on new? Sure, new. Great, I'm ready. Strikes again. We have technical difficulties. Here. All right, take two. I have no, a just kidding. Yeah. Oh, we should, well, yeah. you have a knee brace on, so that definitely today. Knee brace. Wow. Yeah, you're right. What is that? Deer yeah, crossing. Deer crossing. Song. You ever hear that one? Yeah, with a, deer an, people. It's an actual yeah. call from a lady into a radio program. It said, why did they put uh, the Deer crossing signs at dangerous places, the deer cross there. <laughs> they should put in another place where it's safer for the deer. And the guy was like, what? What are you saying? <laughs> the lady was crying. Why did they put it in such dangerous places? <laughs> like, what? I don't think you got the right information. I think they got yeah. it somehow. Yeah. Well, well, we've had many shows without you, and now we have you on the show, Pastor Many. Dang. Wow. Well, that was really good. Episode 5. I had to go deep to get that one. Well, the fifth one is grace. Even greater. We need a lot of grace. Woo! I began my story with uh, In Greater Grace, where Bible speaks. It was on a rainy day in England. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, I met the Did ministry in... I met the ministry in 1980 in Colchester, England. They had a Bible study on the base that I was on. I was in the Air Force. Okay. They had a Bible study on the base that I was on and uh, invited me to the, the Bible study and that began that on a rainy day in England. So were you already saved? I had gotten saved the year before in Los Angeles, outside Los Angeles. Okay. And, uh, and then God prepared the way for me to... I got transferred to England and met the ministry very quickly after that. Wow. So that's that story. That's cool. Yeah. Well. How long were you in the Air Force? I was there six years. Six years. Working on high-tech equipment. And then God calls me to Bible college and uh, or in Lennox. And Lennox doesn't have, you know, there's nothing there. Right. So I'm sitting there, and I, uh, I became my first job for a couple of months was washing dishes at this resort in Lenox. And one night I was just well, looking out the window as I was washing dis dishes, and I'm going, "What did I just do?" <laughs> like a bad trade here. <laughs> like, what did I just do? <laughs> Working on million-dollar airplanes and stuff, and all this equipment. And next thing I know, I'm washing dishes. And then I, I was upgraded to. Avalon, where past love and I got disciples. That is quite the upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, I got I got the girls on the full moon. I worked at night. Wow. He got the boys in the daytime. I got the girls on the full moon. Uh, that's yeah, that was crazy. Woo! So but, what was the hardest thing, going from the Air Force to washing dishes, or from washing dishes to Avalon? Ooh. <laughs> well, it was it was fun. It was training. I mean, we were you know it wasn't like. I wasn't the only one going through it, you know, we always had the body members and the body of Christ and we were, you know, we had, there was a purpose behind it, you know, it, it wasn't like, oh, this is the dead end job, right. you know, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life, but, you know, there was that underlying purpose behind it, you know, and you had fun, uh, there was times where you knew it was going to be a crazy night, so I would just set it up and 
uh, start the evening by just preaching, uh, you know, at them in the middle of this big room, and they would, you are jumping up and down and yelling and, you know, doing a gospel message, and they're like looking at you, and they're like putting, you know, pillows over their heads. <laughs> you know, like, all right, this is working. It only lasted for a, an hour or so, but at least it worked for an hour. But it was good training. So you went from there, Bible college, and then where did you go next? Uh, well, in the midst of Bible college, I did go and you know uh, venture out with um, the team in um, in France, the south of France, with uh, in, uh, in Codignon. Yes. Yeah. Where one of my <clears throat> one of my times was, where I think uh, the pastor of the team and I one morning decided that we wanted to go get figs. And there was this uh, fig tree that was out in this old lady's old lady's heart, yard, but you had to go over the fence to get to the fig tree. And so he told me to go climb into, over the fence and climb on the fig tree and throw figs down. And this late, the old lady comes out with a cane oh, no. and starts throwing rocks at me, you know, yelling at me in French. <laughs> and the pastor of the team runs away and leaves me there, oh, standing in the tree being thrown rocks thrown out at me at the, in the flake fig tree with being cursed out in French. I don't know what she was saying, but it was not ooh la la. <laughs> uh, and then I went in 84 to, uh, to uh, India. You know, with the uh, original team that went there and started in Bombay. Pastor Cannon? No, that that's, uh, Pastor that was before Pastor Cannon. Pastor Cannon took over the year, a year after that. But uh, those should, um, uh, you know, Joe Swader and um, the. Uh, How do you know that I knew? That's where my parents were. Oh, okay, that's my true. My parents oh. were discipled out of that church. Oh yeah, where did where where did they originally from? My dad. They were all they were they were both born in Bombay. In Bombay, what part of Bombay were they in? And Daddy. And Daddy. Yeah, my dad was born in Bombay. First of all, my mom was born in Chengdu. Wow, I I still remember my address in and Daddy. Uh, and, and that uh, Vishal Apartments and Daddy and Daddy and Daddy East. Oh, <laughs> Vishal Apartments. What's what's the Curla Road? Uh-huh. Vishal Apartment, Curla Road, and Daddy East. And then uh, Doctor uh, Briganza had a Bible study, and then Daddy West. That's where I met. Um, that's where I first met the Briganzas, and okay. the Briganzas were all uh, the, the uh, a, Neil. Neil, Neil, Neil was like this eight years old oh, guy. My gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I feel old, man. When you say that you knew Neil Briganza when he was like he was eight years old, eight years old, that you're old. Yep. You're like ancient yep. of days. So how long did you spend in India? Oh, we were there for you know this, uh, the original team. We were just there for six months. We got all got kicked out. Oh boy. And then uh, the second wave came in. Uh, Joe uh, went back, and then uh, Pastor Glenn took over after that. But uh, yeah, I remember. I'm a, uh, the Coelho's, uh, uh, yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing to just to consider the people that are, that are still, you know, that are s- still around from that group. Yeah, the faithfulness of people and, and, and the faithfulness of God, you know, it's this treasure. It's amazing. You know, our, our ministry and our lives are just filled with these, uh, landmarks that really are so uh, important for us you know they're not just they're places but there it's also people and and times you know sure. and it's like so uh, just uh, to be able to treasure yeah, the, them the place is almost not, not important right yeah I mean it's irrelevant in a way yeah and you have so many you have people that have been in the ministry before and they recount the days of you know let like say you know yeah, Lennox was such an amazing time, you know, but it's like, yeah, Lennox was great, but it still continued because it's not the place. Yeah, that's right. The life and uh, the word and the uh, vision and it's, uh, you know, those are the important things. Yes, you know, places you can treasure and, you know, and look at, but it's the, uh, you know, the landmarks that we have for, you know, the, uh, the ways, you know, where God just has has done something and, and set ways in our lives and 
and you know, that's, you know where it says to follow the don't you know don't do away with those landmarks you know and our you know our ministry and our lives have been filled with those landmarks you know and those are things we can look at and especially in times like this you know how you know we have to quite, how do people go through something like this and go through uh, you know trials without without landmarks you know just to think of the faithfulness of God and to understand the nature of God in spite of what's going on it's so important for us to really see these things and to understand and to uh, look at them you know and say wow God is faithful and God has been faithful to us in spite of ourselves you know? that's right Right, Cody? Yeah, he's right. from Pennsylvania. I thought he was from Texas. <laughs> well, I don't know why. He's a Texas Ranger from Pennsylvania. Yeah, Rody Ranger of Pennsylvania. Oh so from India to where? Well, you know, back to back to Baltimore. We were, uh, I got, you know, I got married. Oh, I did did a little stint in in Australia. Uh, with Passive Yater. You went there with Passive Yater? Wow. Yeah, I, this is the time when um, our ministry moved down here. My wife and I were still in Australia that summer. We were covering. And this is how I learned about our ministry moving to Baltimore. Was Pastor Yater calls me 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm stumbling around in a living room uh, looking for the phone because we didn't have cell phones back then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I hear his voice. He goes, when you get back, we won't be here. <laughs> <laughs> I can just remember like half asleep. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're moving to Baltimore. Like, when you get back to Lennox, no one's going to be around. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I'm half asleep going, oh, well, praise the Lord. We'll see what happens. But, uh, yeah. yeah. You look at it, you're like, wow, what a disaster. But... I just love the examples that we've had with Pastor Stevens and, and just with, like Pastor Shallow and all the, you know, just the, the body and the mature people that just really like pointed that it's not, it's not the, you know, the campus or buildings and stuff. The vision goes on and we just we'll move with God, you know, it's, you know, you see the hand of God after, but yeah, you know, you just, you don't know what's happening right then and there. You don't really kind of, don't have it all figured out. But you do know you trust God and you trust the men of God that God has placed, you know, in the leadership in your life. And you just say, okay, we can trust God. You know? And I think that's, you know, it's so important for us at these times, you know, just, uh, that uh, we, can, we can trust God. We can trust what God has done in the past and continue to trust God, what God is doing, all landmarks again, you know. Right. Right. You know, and uh, just, uh, and it, you know, it gives us opportunities to just be still. God just so loves to just, you know, have us watch Him work, and He just so loves for us to just really uh, see, see the salvation of God in our situations, and, you know, that uh, God absolutely is for us, and you know, we can live in fear, or we can choose to understand how much God loves us. And the reality of that, you know, you still have the emotions, and the, there is that reality of fear, but there, there is that second floor, you yes. know, that our lives is much more than what we're seeing. Our lives is, is much more than, uh, you know, what we're feeling or you know, our own evaluations or the world's evaluations on things. There's something else going on. And it doesn't negate the reality of what's going on. Right. There's just something other than that. There's the full spectrum, the, the bigger picture. Yeah. What's going on? That's great. Like Baltimore. <laughs> Baltimore. 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 Hey, I've done a Bible study in here. What's uh, this high school? Dunbar. Yeah. Uh, Shishmanian. Mr. Shishmanian is a teacher there. He still is? Yeah, he goes there. I think he teaches in the summer. Okay. Something like that. It was a summer course. And I remember doing a little meeting, a Bible study with a group there. There's some Filipinos that were there too. Uh, 
uh, something about the Filipinos. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what is what? Kabayan. Kabayan, Filipinos and Indians mm -hmm. and men from Pennsylvania. What's this guy doing? Is he directing traffic? In, in, in Pretoria, in South Africa, we had this one guy in his major intersection. And a, he was uh, not normal, but I guess the police gave him a, a whistle and, and some white gloves. And he's just going, <laughs> nobody took him seriously. But he was directing traffic, but, no, you know, but everybody's just honking and waving at him. I guess it was, it was just, I guess it built him up. <laughs> we gave him something to do. Give him a vision for his life. I don't know what it hey, somebody had somebody was thinking, I guess, I don't know. So is that where you went after Baltimore? You went to South Africa? Or was that later on? No, uh, yeah, that was in two thousand. Nineteen ninety nine actually is when I first went to South Africa with Pastor Shabelli. And I we went back with the mind of Hey, let's try this out for three months and see what you know what God does. We wanted to be with Pastor Shabelli and and uh, you know and and that. And then uh, we we show up and a couple weeks later, Pastor Shabelli says, um, I think I'm going back." <laughs> like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> All right, well, have fun. You guys will do it. Yeah. Uh, thank God I had, you know, I had Pastor Ronaldo at the time and uh, John Orndello and Rene Balan and my wife and uh, we had several others that came and, you know, it was great. We were there with the mind of uh, going for three, for three months and it ended up ten years. God was faithful. The minute we stepped foot there, you know, somebody calls the missions office and said, well, we want to take care of Pastor Manny's rent for three years. You know, and somebody wanted another phone call. I wanted to buy Pastor Mania uh, a car there in South Africa, you know. And, I mean, you know, it wasn't like a brand new car. <laughs> who needs a brand new car? Yeah, who needs a brand new car when we can just uh, be in Africa? Have a good time. Yeah. So, yeah, we were, we were there. It was amazing, you know, uh, the faithfulness of God. And, Again, you know, in all these times, you you always kind of wonder, like you, you have your moments. You know, it's I'm sure it's a testament to many other missionaries. You know, like what am I doing? Why, so why? did you did you have a moment of you know of, of doubt when Pastor Shabelli said, you know, I'm out of here, and you, your your goal was to be with him? Right. That, how did that play out for you? Yeah, you have your yeah, you have your. Uh, thought is like okay what am I going to do now you know that that yeah. that plan has gone out the door right but you know uh past you know past Stevens and many others were just encouraged just, yeah yeah you, know, like, it's, you, you can do it it's your time you know we're you know this is the, the vision of God mm -hmm. vision from God from for the body you know and it's encouraging you know it's not something that we've come up with ourselves and that's safe that uh, it's not something that uh, some plan that we that derived from us, but it was uh, safe to uh, be in the plan of God. You know, even if you didn't, un you know, wasn't what exactly what you you thought it would be or how it wor would work out. You know, and uh, you know, that was good. It's good. You know, and uh, of course we always. <laughs> You know, as with everything, we need the grace of God. Lenny's Deli is still here. Wow. Where are we? Huh. How did we get here? Close to Little Italy. Yeah. Baltimore. 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 Great. Great, great, great. Got any stories from South Africa you want to share? Stories. Any like... uh, adventures with Pastor Ronaldo? Adventures with Pastor Ronaldo? Oh, uh, first... Um, well, in the beginning, it was in the beginning, it was just the three of uh, three of us guys, past Ronaldo, yeah, and uh, a guy named John Orlandello, mm -hmm. and my wife was my wife. The girls were coming a little later, so yeah, we had about a month or so. So we went a little crazy. We rented a car, 
and Pastor Trebelli was encouraging us to be a little on the wild side. He said, <laughs> you know, we've never been to Namibia and we've never been to Botswana and we've never been to Angola. And we said, oh, well, well we got the free time. Let's all be the pioneers of that for the ministry. You know, so we went out and uh, we rented this uh, Toyota Corolla from, uh, from uh, what's that one? Uh, forget the name of the Okay, the, hey. Uh-oh. We drive a friend. We lost our friend. Hello, testing, one, two, three. But, uh, so, we rented a car, and, uh, <laughs> it was for unlimited mileage. So we, uh, we traveled, uh, from Pretoria, or it was, yeah, to Pretoria, to through Botswana, through the Kalahari Desert, into Namibia, and on the, to the border of Angola. And uh, they went, they would, the guy in Angola said, well, you can't come in unless you're, you have a visa, but hey, you know, I'll let you in. You just give me your passports, we'll let you in, and you come back. I'm like, uh, n- no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Pastor Ronaldo was amazing. He, 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 had, he had an amazing time of driving. I don't want to, <laughs> but in the middle, uh, I was driving, uh, and then he took over in the middle of the uh, Kalahari Desert, and, and uh, he, um, he, we were just, you know, we hadn't seen a car for about three or four hours. Another car. We were in this road, and there's wild donkeys on the, on the besides other things, elephants and stuff. But there were wild donkeys all over the roads over there. And I didn't. Ha- I was resting, kind of tired. Had my glasses off, and I just, you know, kind of like looking through my squint. And I seen these things in the middle of the road, too. And I see. Pa- I hear Pastor Ronaldo. She, he's like accelerating. Hey, what's going on here? And I open my eyes, and he's threading the needle between two donkeys on the middle of the road. And they were like, kind of like standing in the middle of the road, and he wants to go in between them. And we just about made it. And then one of them decides to turn his head, and we hit his head with a oh with a side gosh. view mirror, and the glass is like <laughs> all over the place. And I could, all I could think of like PR. It, he wasn't PR back then, but he was, PR in the middle of the Kalahari Desert. <laughs> we haven't seen a car for five hours. What are we going to do if we run into that thing? But by the grace of God, it was just glass. And then uh, on the Kapirvi Strip, you know that little strip between uh, in Namibia and Botswana and Angola, there's this little strip called the Kapirvi Strip. And we were driving along that road and something where, you know, the roads in uh, Namibia and Botswana are all dirt in some areas. And there, you can actually go really fast on them too. Because they're so, because it's so dry. So um, yeah, we were, some of the time we were traveling about 140 kilometers an hour on a dirt road. But once in a while you have to stop because the. Uh, 90 miles an hour. <laughs> uh, once in a while you have to stop because there's a there's a fence, a gate in the middle of the road. You have to you're crossing somebody's. Uh, look, black cat. Uh oh. Not gonna run him over. <laughs> so much for bad luck. <laughs>